I am delighted to be here today to talk with you all. This is a very exciting time in all of your lives. It may not always seem this way, but you are on the verge of deciding a career with and or educational paths that you will take to decide how you want to contribute to the world. And I want you to notice that I did not say work, get a job, but I said how you want to contribute to the world. Because I believe when, when we do what we love, we are contributing to the world. We are making it a better place. Whether you become a teacher, go into business, go into politics, have a job as in food service. No matter what you do, you will be making the world a better place. You will be contributing to the world. And along the way, as you enter this path of figuring out how you want to contribute to the world, there will be many twists and turns along the way. Things will come up that you didn't plan for. You will be pointed in directions that you never thought you would go into. In one of my messages today is to encourage you to look at all those twists and turns that will happen in your life as possibilities and as guideposts that are directing you along the way to where you're intended to be. And today I would like to share with you my story of how twists and turns in my life led me to the career I had today. When I was your age and younger, going into high school, I thought I wanted to go into business for a career. I thought it sounded good to be able to run a business someday. I didn't know what kind of business, but I thought that sounded like a good plan. So when I got into high school, I began taking business courses to prepare for taking business in college. And I took them with no problem at first. And then in my junior year of high school, I took accounting which often felt like taking a foreign language. <laughs> and I muddled through the year and took my regents exam, the end of the year exam, and they passed the exam by one point. <laughs> and it was at that time that I began to think you know, I've I never really been a numbers person. And that was never my syndrome point in school. So I began to rethink this whole idea of 
going into business in college. And I want to interject here one of the lessons I learned. And that is, as important as it is to know your abilities and know what you're good at, it's equally important to know where your strengths are not. And that's not a sign of weakness, but it's a sign of insight and wisdom. And it's another guide directing you to where you need to go. So as the college grew closer, and I should say that for me, college was never something negotiable. I was fortunate that when I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy as a toddler, my parents quickly got that I needed the same expectations placed on me as my siblings. So college was expected on me. So I began to think about what I really loved to do. And what came to me was I love reading, writing, the written word, and that I'm much more a word person than a number person. So I entered college to right down the road here at Le Moyne as an English major with a minor in communications. And I have to say I loved college, and for those of you thinking about college, you will love it. It's a great experience. I met people there who are still my core group of friends today, and I loved living on campus. So I went to Des Moines thinking that I would be a writer someday. And I studied English, and in fact, in my senior year of college, I, I did what they call an independent study, and I actually wrote a very short novel. The novel never got published, but it's done and sitting on one of the shelves in my house. And I fostered the dream of being a writer. Well, after four happy years of college, I graduated with a degree in English and I needed some way to pay the bills and support myself because another expectation of my parents was when you were done with college, you moved out of the house. <laughs> so I needed a way to support myself. And after some initial interviews for newspapers did not work out. My older brother, Dan, suggested to me that maybe I wanted to apply at a local United Cerebral Palsy because he thought, and he would select, that they may hire me because I was once a recipient of their services as a child. And indeed they did. They actually created a job for me 
in their public relations department writing their newsletters and press releases. And I learned two very valuable things in that job. One, that I did not want a career in public relations. <laughs> What's in my cup of tea? But two, and much more valuable, was I received an introduction into the world of disability services. Now, one would think, because I had this disability all my life, I would know a thing or two about disability services. But I was very young, only 22, and I had been a very sheltered life at that point and didn't have didn't know many other people with disabilities. So part of my education was learning about the experiences of other people with disabilities. And that's was back in the 1990s and disability organizations were very focused on getting people with disabilities who were put in institutions simply because they had disability and were different and bringing them out of the institutions and into the community. And I was so privileged to get to know some of these people who were being discharged from institutions. And they began to share with me their personal stories. And sadly, many of them had been abandoned by their families once they were put into institutions. And unfortunately, there were several abuses and forms of neglect that took place in the institutions. And the people I got to know really had some heartache about what had happened to them. And I, sh I should point out another lesson I learned at that some point. Here I was, a person with a disability, and I thought I knew what it was like to live with a disability. And sometimes it's a gift to think you know it all, but be open to not knowing it all, and begin to learn things and say, I really had no idea. And that's another gift that you can take into the world that can be very helpful. So I got to know some people with disabilities. And I got to hear some of that heartache. And I got looking around that United Cerebral Palsy organization that I worked at that really offered a array of services to people. But there was very little counseling offered to people to talk to them about how they were doing personally, how they were coping with their disability. So that's what motivated me 
to apply to graduate school and want to become a counselor. So after three years working, I applied to grad school, came back here to Syracuse, and entered the Rehabilitation Counseling Program at SU. Well, fast forward two years later, I'm again a graduate with a degree in counseling, and I again need to find a way to pay my bills and support myself. I was so lucky, though. I was quickly offered a job here in Syracuse at Exceptional Family Resources because I can simply go out with bits and degree in counseling and hang my shingle up and go into private practice I needed to get more experience. And that long after I began the Exceptional Family Resources, they hired a new executive director who they actually still um, enable. And Nicole was very supportive of helping me gradually develop my private practice. And what she allowed me to do was taper back my hours at EFR as I could build up my private practice. So after a couple of years, I was able to take a big leap of faith and I quit working and went into private practice full time at my practice abilities, consulting and counseling, which has just undergone a name change and we are now Radiant Abilities. <laughs> And this is a job that is perfect for me. I love what I do. I love counseling people on coping with a disability and going into the world and striving for their goals and dreams and working for myself seems to be a perfect fit for me. It wasn't really until I was invited to speak here today that I realized how full circle my dreams had become. If you remember way back in Eidsengul, I wanted to go into business. I thought it'd be a cool idea to run a business someday. Well, I may be a business of one, but I do run a business in today, rating abilities. And if you also remember, in college, I wanted to become a writer. Well, most of you probably don't know that, but for the last few years, I've been working on a self-help book for people with disabilities. It's called Firewalk, Embracing Different abilities, and it's about how when you learn to embrace your disability as who you are, 
you can then help people more in the world. And it has a transformative effect on people. And they hope within the next year or two that it will be published. I also write a regular blog on my website, kathyoc.com, which is about living with a disability. So long ago, I gave up fiction writing, but I am a writer today. In addition to being a counselor and a business owner. At your age, I would have never dreamed that I would have the career I have right now. And just how rewarding it is. I had dreams, big dreams at your age. And as they reflect on the past 20 plus years, I realize how much of my dreams have been there. And now I have always had some kind of vision of how I could contribute to the world. What I have learned is how vital it is to have dreams for how you want to contribute to the world. They are your guides throughout adulthood. Develop a vision for yourself. Dream. And let that vision be your guide. What I learned that is equally important is to be open to what comes up along the way of reaching for those and dreams. The unexpected, the circumstances and events that weren't planned on can be significant guides to helping direct you to where you're meant to go. Think of them as traffic signs telling you where to go and what you are meant to do in the world. I leave you with bits of lights. Have dreams, dream big, open to all the possibilities before you, even the ones you didn't plan on, and trust in your abilities. You all have abilities. You all have a way you can contribute to the world. If you do this, you will have one of the greatest and gets in life, doing what you love. Have a very good day, and thank you so much.